Hi there, Stephen Efcher. Welcome to the uh, part one of the Dashboard Correlator Coaching Series. Um, this will be a four-part uh, series, and we're going to be discussing this presentation, correlations, and how we apply them to trading. So what are correlations? Intermarket correlations. And lastly, how do we trade using correlations? So what are correlations? Essentially, they're a statistical measure of how two securities move in relation to each other. So the movement can be in the same, opposite, or totally random direction. And if you trade currencies, you'll know that they are traded in pairs. So you need to understand the underlying movement of that currency. So for instance, if you're trading Euro US dollar, um, you need to understand the movement of the Euro and the US dollar to get the overall movement of that uh, currency. Very important to un understand and control your risk exposure. You'll see the more you understand correlations, this will assist you in your risk, risk exposure. So it's crucial to understand how currencies move in relation to each other, and not only currencies, the rest of the markets as well. So correlation is computed um, into what is known as the correlation coefficient, which ranges between plus 1 and minus 1. So perfect positive correlation has a coefficient of plus 1, and implies that two currency pairs will move in the same direction 100% of the time. If it's a perfect negative correlation, the coefficient is minus 1. Obviously, you're moving in the opposite direction 100% of the time. And if it's 0, the movement between the two currency pairs is said to have a 0 or no correlation. And they are completely independent and random from each other. So, correlations can be strong or weak and last for weeks, months or even years. But they do change. And this can change very rapidly. So you need to monitor correlations on a daily basis to understand how these movements are working and, and if they are changing and if there's an underlying reason why they change. So it will assist you in making better decisions if you want to leverage, hedge or diversify your trades and keep you from trading currencies that cancel each other out. You'll see that this is very important in understanding um, how you trade. But you don't want to be trading currencies that are highly correlated. Um, and I'll give you some examples of how you do that. So the interpretation of correlation coefficients, if we can convert it to percentages, 0 to 20%, very weak. Moving up here, say 40 to 70, it's moderate. And then 70 to 90, strong. 90 to 100%, very strong. Okay, if you wanted to monitor or look at the uh, correlations um, on, on various time frames, you can go to the site called um, mataf, M-A-T-F, M-A-T-A-F dot net, and then you just click on Forex correlations. Um, here's an example here of a daily correlation. I think they have 15 minutes, hourly, even 5 minutes, and weekly charts as well. So yeah, the, here's the euro US dollar, and as you can see here, the euro yen, is an 88.7% correlation. Moving up um, to the pound US dollar here, 91.7% uh, positive correlation. And on the opposite side, the negative correlations, a minus 85% on the US dollar CAD and minus 98.1 US dollar Swiss. So as the Euro US dollar is moving up, you will see that the uh, US dollar Swiss, um, most of the time, Move in the opposite direction. So why do currencies change value? The answer to this is you need to look beyond the currency pairs and themselves and actually analyze other markets. So if you ask any currency trader, you'll normally uh, find that the currency traders believe that all they're doing is they're just focusing on uh, trading currencies. Well, by doing this, you're, you're actually putting yourself at a severe disadvantage because your analysis will be limited to what has happened in Forex as opposed to you'll never really know why it happened. So it's a very limited 
way of looking at the markets because as we know global markets and all markets are interconnected and they have an effect on each other so it's therefore crucial that we understand how these markets are correlated and how they move in relation to each other global economic factors are very dynamic and the market sentiment frequently shifts and results in changing correlations the most common reasons for changing correlations are diverging monetary policies sensitivity to commodity prices and sensitivity to other economic and political factors so the result is one currency normally receives a boost as a safe haven while another falls due to uh, risk aversion and you'll often hear this where um, traders and they talk about the US dollar being seen as a safe haven so when, whenever there's an economic uh, when there's economic trouble in the US or across, across the globe investors normally run run back into the uh, safe haven green back and when trading you generally have two modes you have the risk on mode where markets are fearful so there's the riskier asset classes i.e. equities are sold and money flows back into safe havens like the US dollar and bonds and the opposite occurs where you have the risk off trades so now there is risk appetite in the market and so the market um, the US dollar and the bonds are sold off in favor of riskier asset classes like um, So intermarket relationships depend on the forces of inflation and deflation or deflation. In a normal inflationary environment, you have stocks and bonds um, are positively correlated. And in a, in a deflationary environment, stocks and bonds are inversely correlated. This table over here just uh, represents that or shows us how, uh, gives a graphical representation where you have 30-year bonds and the US dollar moving in the same direction. In the opposite direction you have the S&P 500 here and you have the commodity index moving in the opposite direction so stocks and um, stocks and commodities moving up in the same direction and negatively correlated you would ha normally have the US dollar and bonds moving in the opposite direction here's another um, chart here with gold, oil, Dow, FTSE, and silver, um, and all the correlations on the right hand side. All these charts will be given to you um, at, uh, as a pack in an ebook, so that you can go over it at uh, your leisure. Uh, just some examples here. Here we see gold being negatively correlated to the US dollar CAD and the US dollar, obviously, and a high positive correlation to the, the pound against the US dollar. Um, look here at uh, indices we have the Dow here um, and that has a big negative 97 percent correlation negative correlation to the US dollar CAD and a 99 percent correlation to the Aussie so when stocks normally move up Aussie dollar will move up US dollar on the whole moves in the opposite direction and here's another um, chart depicting a similar um, things that we spoke about now stocks up Aussie up New Zealand dollar up euro yen up US dollar care down euro Aussie down GDP Aussie down exact opposite when we um, have stock setting off we have the converse of the top here and this is just another depiction um, of the various um, movements and correlations of the market as just to remember that these correlations do change so you need to monitor them on a um, on a daily basis basically and then you look at them over, over months and years as well so that you can get a good feel of how um, the market is moving so how do you trade correlations so one of the big things that I mentioned earlier on was avoid trading currencies that are highly correlated as they will effectively cancel each other out so if you example is if you take the Aussie US dollar long and the New Zealand uh, US dollar short you cancel the move out as they have a high correlation if you want to hedge your position however 
uh, let's just say you going long on the euro US dollar and the position positions going against you you could then take a small short using the uh, for instance the pound US dollar in the opposite uh, direction and that will then protect you against any major fluctuations and create a semi hedge if you want to leverage your profits or double up on your positions um, using diversification you instead of going say um, two positions long on the euro US dollar you can go one euro US dollar one pound US dollar both long both highly correlated um, just remember that by doubling up you actually magnifying your risk and then if you want to confirm a breakout or a fake out, so as we know, the euro and US dollar and the pound US dollar are correlating quite um, highly at this point in time. US dollar Swiss is highly correlated in the opposite direction. If they're all sitting at a point of resistance and US dollar is, say, at, at support, when the one breaks out, the others will normally follow because they have a high correlation. And this can be used as a true leading indicator, which is... You don't have much of that um, when you're trading. I'm talking about a, a proper leading indicator. You can also use stock indices to give you a clue as, uh, on the direction of the US dollar and the yen. So as we discussed, the riskier ap appetite stocks, um, when they normally are all up, so the US dollar and the yen, um, well, when the, the riskier appet appetite um, classes say, and stocks are up, the US dollar and the yen normally will weaken. So there's a, that negative correlation. Then all you've got to do is you're looking for to trade the strongest currencies against the US dollar and the yen. And you, there's various tools that I'll explain to you that we can use to check these um, strengths and weaknesses. You can also use the commodity trade. So you trade commodity currencies using commodities. Gold is highly correlated to the Aussie US dollar. So when the Aussie say gold's breaking out we'll normally see that the Aussie's going to break out as well and the same ha happens uh, occurs with, with oil and the US dollar CAD so when oil is strong USD CAD is normally weaker all right so that's just a quick summary of what correlations are how we can um, trade them and um, what to look out for when we are trading um, currencies and intermarkets uh, correlations. What we're going to be looking at in uh, part two is a tool that I've developed. To call, it's called the dashboard uh, correlator, which gives you strengths and weakness weaknesses within the market, and it clearly defines correlations, volatility, and momentum within the market. But that will be going over in the next presentation. Bye for now. See you in part two.